Mr. Eby and Casserole is dumb. Scooby Doo Bop 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 I'm so sorry, babe. I just, I, I hadn't tasted him yet. I'm and sorry. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Looking forward to, right. you right. know. Like, Don't talk about the ingredients. I know. Yeah. After, it's just a surprise for your mouth. Yeah. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. It's time for another MCU program on Disney+. Plus. Finally, we have the first real exploration of Clint, uh, Clint Barton's Hawkeye, played by Jeremy Renner. And we're introducing the next Hawkeye that will likely be leading the Young Avengers in the not-too-distant future on Ibs, um, uh, Disney+, Plus in uh, Haley Steinfeld as Kate Bishop. We've been looking forward to this one. I personally, when I saw the trailer, I said, this looks like my kind of TV show. It looks like it's got a little bit of uh, planes, trains, and automobiles with a little bit of Die Hard into it. I like, uh, you know, kind of action comedy stuff sitting around the holidays. So I thought this was going to be my show. But I do have two ringers here with me to talk about this. Uh, back from reviewing, uh, was it uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier is my good friend Skip and Tosh. How you doing, Skip? I am here, man. Skip Barton, on duty, sir. Ready to put an arrow right in the middle of that thing. Also returning from uh, reviewing Loki with me here on the channel is Aaron Sproul. So we got uh, uh, two riggers this time. How you doing, Aaron? I'm doing well. Doing well. Good to be oh back. Oh my goodness, on. I didn't even put your big credit out there. Writer for season four of Young Justice. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, my uh, my episode should be uh, out next year. Hopefully, everybody's checking out and enjoying it. I know I've gotten some some questions about uh, whether or not Superman is a deadbeat dad <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> I just tell people just just let the, let the show unfold. Like don't don't judge everything based on one scene in one episode. Just let everything play out. Well, hopefully, you keep that in mind as we talk about uh, the first two episodes of Hawkeye. They were both released this uh, today. What were your general impressions, Skip? Was this uh, satisfying? Was this what you were expecting? It was surprisingly favorable. And what I mean by that is, like you, I did see the trailer and I felt um, positive about it. It felt like, you know, like you said, some diehard vibes. Um, I've never been the biggest Kate Bishop fan, but I do like Hawkeye. I am a huge Haley Steinfeld fan and I am a pretty darn big Jeremy Renner fan, um, as he is from a uh, very close, a uh, very close city to where I currently live. So he's kind of like a hometown type dude that gets celebrated. Um, and going in, you know, uh, seeing some of the things that I wasn't sure was going to work for me, um, the, some of them did on top of the things that I did think that were going to work for me. So those two things put together uh, was generally favorable for the first two uh, episodes. All right, Aaron, what did you think? Did you come out with a, a positive outlook for Hawkeye moving forward? Uh, I'm going to echo Skip here. I uh, I am not a Kate Bishop fan at all. I find the character, like so many of the modern Marvel characters, to be completely insufferable and uh, without any real personality aside from snarky uh, and rude. And I thought that they did a good job here. I think that the transition of her looking up to Hawkeye as opposed to just taking his identity and looking down on him it's one of the changes that I was hoping they would make because that's uh, you know that makes for a good uh, good chemistry, and we haven't seen too much of them together, but I've liked what I've seen from them so far. And uh, I am also a huge Haley Steinfeld fan. Uh, just thought she was fantastic the first time I ever saw her in True Grit with Jeff Bridges. Uh, thought she just absolutely uh, as soon as you know she came on screen, I was like, this girl's got presence. She's going to be a star, and uh, you know she she did, she's not disappointing so far in this show. Absolutely. So let's get into Kate Bishop, another character in comic books. I'm generally speaking, I do not like. There have been a couple of stories that features a character that I've liked, but for the most part, I'm kind of with you guys. Didn't have a lot of purpose. You don't know why that character wants to be Hawkeye within the comic books. They clear that up in five minutes here, Skip. They give her a clear uh, mission in Drive. She witnesses the Battle of, of uh, New York with the Avengers versus the Chitauri. Her father passes away, and along the way, Hawkeye himself saves her, and she realizes she needs to learn how to fight, and she wants to pick up a bow and arrow. And obviously, so we have purpose, we have drive, we know why the character is uh, connected to Hawkeye and would like to follow in his footsteps. And we also get a, a bit of her home life, which obviously isn't great. She did lose her father, and you know, there's a there's a new man moving in. And I wish they would have made the stepdad a little bit more likable because he just comes off as really scummy. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. Um, you know, the significance of, uh, of Clint Barton, Hawkeye, to her w um, was 
you know, done very well. Um, even a transition period, you know, in the moments that she's, you know, losing her father, she's also seeing, you know, like a someone who ends up turning into almost like a, you know, a, a male role model figure, you know, saving the city, you know, and, and even saving the world. So they did a good job on significance. It's nice when the parties both have some sort of admiration for each other, but I think most people do also enjoy the journey of them building respect for each other. So it's not, it's not given it's earned. We like generally like things to be earned. Um, and uh, so all of those things, I felt like they executed very well tying in the, um, the Chitari invasion, you know, that was linked to Loki and whatnot from the um, 20, you know, Avengers movie uh, from 2012. And then as far as the uh, stepdad is concerned, Y yes, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I I'm going to let it play out a little bit more because ultimately we, you know, it's, we're supposed to feel like he's scummy. We're supposed to feel like, you know, he shouldn't be liked. I don't think we're supposed to like him, but you know, there's two different ways to go about it. There's the whole start off liking him and then he turns and then, you know, there is the, Hey, right out the bat. So I'm going to reserve judgment on that and let it unfold a little bit more, but I do like how everything has been earned so far re re regarding, you know, father Hawkeye transitioning into um, five, you know, male role model figure at that time. And then new guy coming in, that would in, be inserted in that role and things are, are not so copacetic. You got anything to add as far as well, the introduction gave him a, of Kate Bishop? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Aaron. I was going to say, at least they gave him a, a literal mustache to twirl in his scenes. Absolutely. Because uh, <laughs> he is definitely uh, giving off the, the solid villain vibe. Mm -hmm. You know what's interesting? We also get the introduction to Clint Barton. He's in a very different part in his life. Part in his life. He's been Ronan. He's been returned, or his family has been returned after the blip, and he's kind of getting back together. He's with his children. They're watching the Steve Rogers musical. It's giving the heebie-jeebies. He's seeing, the uh, obviously, uh, Black Widow up there, reliving some moments, has to get some air. So you, you see with his children, he, he's struggling, but he needs to get back in time for Christmas with his family, and he's got a little bit of PTSD. I, I kind of like the introduction of Clinton Barton here. Obviously, he's still haunted a bit. I know, Aaron, you had said specifically you really wanted them to explore, you know, the fallout of, of Ronan and what it does to it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that they found a happy medium. I, I was hoping that they wouldn't get, you know, I want, I want it explored, but I don't want them to get bogged down in it. Uh, and I don't want him to be morose. But it was nice to see them give that immediate nod to the fact that he's, you know, he, he became a cold-blooded killer when his family disappeared. And now he's got to step back into the role of family man. And what does that what does that look like? And just showing that little bit of struggle that he's having was uh, I, I thought was a nice nod to the continuity, uh, which I think is is always important. You know, you take your character someplace, you need to deal with the ramifications of that. And maybe they'll explore it a little bit more throughout the show. Uh, you know, I think that he'll probably probably find his way, kind of mentoring. Uh, Kate Bishop, I think that that'll give him a, a solid footing to kind of maybe even be better at reconnecting with his kids and, and kind of taking that role. So, yeah, I think it uh, think it could be an interesting ride if done right. Do you have anything to add to that one, Skip, before we kind of move on to the big action piece and them two meeting for the first time? He hit the target on the bullseye. All right, so the impetus for these two meeting is uh, Haley Steinfeld's mother. Uh, it turns out she's from a very well-to-do family. They're they're rich. They're kind of uh, the elitist, the aristocrats. And her new, uh, newly discovered, I guess he's her fiance. They're at a big party, and there's a secret auction going on, and they're auctioning off like some stuff, some superhero memorabilia, specifically the sword belonging to Ronan and the suit belonging to Ronan. And she's snuck down there because she does not uh, get the right vibes from her, uh, her soon-to-be stepfather's. I believe it's his uncle. She's kind of uh, snooping or whatnot. And then we got, a, I don't know, an elite military unit, like some type of, uh, I don't know, some pay for pay for uh, play military guys. They blow up the wall. They, they're looking for a watch of some sort. And she ends up putting on the rodent suit and kicking ass and taking names. This is probably my biggest gripe with this episode, Skip, is we're supposed to see her grow into the role of, of Hawkeye. She should just be an Avenger right now. She literally just took down eight eight dudes that are trained paramilitary men, armed to the teeth, and she you know took them out with relative ease. It's like, can we struggle a little bit? Obviously, when the when the Russian dudes show up, it's a little bit harder for it. But 
she does run through. Isn't it the Russian dudes butter. throughout? Isn't it the tracksuit mafia that that's breaking into the place? Yeah, that was them. They they had a uh, ski masks on at uh, at first, but w- once because it was dark in that scene, once you got into the light, the you could start to see like the tracksuit lines like down their legs and stuff. So so yeah, it was it was them. They were they were they were goons. Um, I mean, I. I I felt what you're saying, but I, I I took the fact that they took like the Jackie Chan approach, where like she 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 was she was given the licks, but she took some too. Um, so it wasn't so easy for her to do it, and that's I, I never read a lot. I, actually, I don't think I read any of the Kellen Th- Thompson series, but from the David Aja Matt Fraction run, like you know that's kind that's kind of a bit of the tone. Like you know Clint's not untouchable; he gets like messed up a lot. And same thing with Kate when she's in there. Like you know they get injured. So I appreciate that they did that they incorporated those parts of her failing and having some flaws, um, and not being like you know super untouchable within that scene. So for for, for me personally, that particular scene it it worked more than it didn't. They establish in the dialogue that uh, that she's a black belt. So she has she has some fighting skills, and most of the fighting that she does in that, where she's winning, is either distance using a weapon. Uh, you know, she's hitting their heads with uh, with wine bottles and things like that. Which, by the way, one thing that took me out was some of the very comical sound effects of the uh, the wine bottles hitting the guys' heads. It was almost cartoony, and uh, so I think they should have toned that back a little bit. But whenever she got up close in a confrontation with one of the guys, she she took her licks, yeah. which you know she's. She's probably, Haley is probably like, what, 110, 115 pounds, maybe? Soaking wet. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, like, maybe, and hopefully I'm not insulting her. Uh, but uh, whenever she got into a confrontation with one of these bigger guys, they overpowered her, which I think was important to show. You know, as, as much as uh, she, she has no superpowers, she's just a, uh, a regular girl who's, uh, who's fighting these guys off. So, you know, I think that they, I think they established that well. And then she, she definitely was out of her depth in the later confrontations when they surround her and, uh, and her, you know, <laughs> throwing hands. So I think that, I think they handled that pretty well. So as far as that later confrontation, it turns out her in the Ronin suit has been captured on film and has ended up on the news. And Clint Barton with his kids see this news clip and realizes there's the unfinished business regarding his time as Ronin and goes out there and to investigate Thankfully, he does show up in time this time because uh, the Russian fellas are having a bit better time surrounding her and, and getting the drop on her out in the open street. And he kind of finishes them off for her. And that's when we get the first uh, meeting. And she says, you're Hawkeye. And he's like, who the hell are you? Because he was definitely expecting somebody else underneath that outfit, Aaron. Yeah, I I really liked, uh, you know, that kind of, we kind of saw that in the trailer. So it wasn't really a big surprise. Uh, you know, I, I, I always hate when they showed like the end of an episode or the end of the movie in a in a trailer um i don't think that uh that, that's a good practice it kind of takes the sting out of it so it was a good place to end but you know didn't need that early reveal i i liked the fact that uh, he's he's completely mystified it makes me wonder who he thought might have been under that uh, under that mask if there's a story there or if it's just one of those things like he was just surprised that it was this this young woman so i'm, I'm interested in uh, where they're going to go with that do you have any final uh, words on the episode one, Skip, before we move on to the second episode? Um, yeah, I, I agree with Aaron that I, I wish that wasn't in the trailer because it, it would have had more dramatic effect. Um, you know, so it, it, it sucks a little bit that I've seen that. But at the same time, um, yeah, I, I, I had an appreciation for the way that, you know, uh, Clint came into the scene and then. Uh, the reveal, you know, of course, a, a solid way to to, uh, to end the episode. It was a, a, a earned cliffhanger. And they're showing Clint as competent. You know, he's he's fighting. He fought those guys off fairly easily. You know, we we've seen him as Ronan. We know that uh, that he's got skills. It's uh, a nice departure from the comic book, uh, where you know, for the for years and years and years, you know, Clint, while a bit of a goofball, was extremely skilled. He you know was trained by Captain America in hand to hand combat. You know he obviously greatest archer in the world you know he's got all these skills in the comic book and then you know when matt fraction got a hold of him turned him into kind of like a hipster goofball and i like that they're kind of avoiding the worst aspects of the comics and just drawing kind of like the best ideas out and then putting that polish on them and you know keeping these characters as as heroic and skilled in their own right Aaron, what did you think about them introducing an aspect of the character that was really not there previously to this to where he has a hearing impairment and he's got hearing aids and he's technically deaf I don't it's think anyone the, probably knew that until now. 
Yeah, no, it's one of the things I always liked about his character. Uh, you know, I always thought it was an interesting, uh, an interesting take. And it's nice to see them incorporate it. And I like the little teaser that we get in the next episode where she's asking why he has the hearing aids. And they just give you that quick montage of all the big explosions that he's been in. <laughs> he just kind of has a throwaway line about, you know, like, ah, no idea. Uh, you know, <laughs> that was all a, a nice little nod to the comics. There's a lot of little nods in there that I, I think are for comic fans. And I'd like to see more of that because, as we know, some of the previous uh, Disney Plus series that, that we've been given – the writers have no idea about any of the comic continuity. They're just making things up based off of the movies. So it's nice to see them going back to the source material and bringing in some of those elements. So that will bring us into episode two. Picks up exactly where episode one uh, finishes off there, Skip. And the two are getting to know each other. They're kind of feeling each other out. You know, why do you have this uh, this this uniform? And, and obviously you got the Russian guys coming after him. It gets lost along the way. And the, unfortunately, the Russian guys figure out her, what her name is. It's Kate Bishop, and they start kind of uh, going their separate ways uh, as far as where this adventure is going. Uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed that that time. They had time to, you know, build rapport. Um, I think the name of this episode was, like, Never Meet Your Heroes or whatever. And, you know, part, part of what got, you know, for someone who she's idolized for so long, finally meeting them and, and they they showed and expressed her excitement very well and you know and, and very apparent throughout it but um you know clint is in a place in his life where all he wants to do is be with his family he's had you know 10 10 plus years of just crazy event after crazy event after crazy event you know he's got this promise to his daughter of course after coming out of the whole you know ronin phase and because his family came back as was mentioned earlier he wants to focus on that aspect so you know and it even showed during the rogers thing you know one of the other elements was the guy asking him for a selfie you know while they were at the urinals you know that was like the eminem um, moment for me where, uh, where like people asking eminem you know for like his autograph and he's like cussing people out he's like i'm with Haley. what are you guys doing it was kind of a similar thing so he's over the whole i'm a celebrity type thing but this is his biggest fan. So I really like how they added that kind of tension into the scene. It was cool to, um, you know, begin to see a little bit more of her archery skills that she had developed, um, you know, since she was younger and she asked her mom for a bow at her father's funeral. So in that scene, they put they did a good job of putting like a lot of different elements together to kind of, you know, shake up into the cocktail of what's going to be, you know, the um, – kind of the fuel for their for a little bit of the fuel for their relationship um going forward it's a really nice juxtaposition that they're doing with uh with kate bishop's character in that when she's in her world with her parents you know you, that's a very different relationship she's got kind of her walls up with her mom you know she's very kind of sarcastic and she's got like this this snark that i think you know they kind of drew from the comic book character but they mm -hmm. managed to do it in a way that doesn't make her obnoxious or unlikable which is what the comic the comic character really struggles with is she is just so unlikable in the way that she's written. So they've got that with her mom. But then when she's with Hawkeye, all of a sudden she's this like wide eyed, innocent little girl, like looking up to this idol. And it's a really nice switch. And it, it just shows that there's some range within the character and, you know, that we should, uh, this is the sort of thing we should be getting in the comic books. But of course, you know, the writers of the comic books are not that talented. <laughs> I do agree. So this kind of causes them to go off on their own separate ways. Uh, Kate Bishop is more interested on what the hell is going on with the, my future stepfather and his uncle, who she discovered was murdered. And then we have, have Clint Barton wants to, to regain the, the rodent suit, and he also wants to get a hold of these uh, Russian outfit guys. So they kind of go off on their separate ways. We'll go with the Clint Barton stuff first. Um, they play this a little bit too much for laughs. He ends up finding out that there's a, a LARPing troop or some type of LARPing tournament, and one of the participants has his Ronin suit. And he needs to go get it. Um, I, did you like the laughs there, Aaron? Uh, uh, not really, because to me it just smacked of the things that are happening in the comics right now that I don't like, where they're like, you know, look, nerd stuff, you know, I'm yeah. such a big nerd, you know, like, ooh, look, LARPing. What I think would have brought that around is if, and I don't think many people would have noticed, but I would have enjoyed it if you went back, because they did the same kind of joke in Loki where he showed up at the Renaissance Festival, and then the woman's like, some of us need this. What I would have liked was bringing her over and having her be the girl that confronts him at the LARPing thing, just age her up a little bit and make it that same woman. So she's still doing this. You know, she's still going out and doing this kind of thing. I thought it would have been a nice little intercon uh, interconnectivity and might have made the joke land a little bit more. Um, for 
being handed kind of a, a, a dumb side plot there. Uh, I thought Jeremy Renner played it really well. He's just so exhausted, you know, with everything and with Please having to do kill it. Please me. I don't yeah. want to fake bite you anymore. It's like, you got to feel <laughs> yeah, it, like, I just don't want to do this, you know? And, and it kind of felt like maybe that's, uh, maybe that's how he felt when he read the scene. <laughs> and he was just channeling it and i thought that so that made it work but i thought it went on a little bit a uh, little bit too long a little bit silly and was just one of those side plots to pad out time it felt like more than any uh, maybe it'll come back around maybe that fire definitely I, that character the guy that he got the suit from that looks up to him we're definitely seeing him in the lo- second to last or the last episode turns out he's got a job that they you know and he's has got a skill that really helps him out yeah because he he got too much screen time and got a name. If, if it's just a throwaway, then that's just that's just bad writing. Yeah, yeah. Gr- Grill, Grills is definitely making a return yes. later on. Absolutely. That that was very apparent the way they put the season. For me personally, it it, wor- it worked like really well. I do agree that it went on a little too long. Like I think if they could have shaved a little bit off the, like if it could have just happened within their first interaction and not the whole tournament thing, and he had to, you know, like you know, trial by combat with everybody around. I think that took it a little too long. I understand why they did it that way because it made their hit. Like it's going to be even that much more significant as he comes back around whenever he makes a return to the show, whatever fashion that's in. But I got, I I had neighbors for years that, that would LARP and I would see them out there every Saturday. And I, I never got in there with them, but I would like go talk to them and hang out and chill with them. And like, and then I had some friends later on that I met and they would LARP too. And I would go to like their little conventions and stuff like that. So to me, I think it just hit so close to home that there was just not a way that I wasn't going to connect with it. And I, I did actually appreciate how Jeremy Renner played the scene, you know, how he was just over it. And, you know, like, like y'all said, even, even the whole line, like, I fought Thanos, you know, like, like as, <laughs> as he's like, gotta let this dude like, like, you know, at, at the same time, he doesn't want to do it. Cause it's like my pride, bro. Like I literally saved the world. And like, you are asking me to kill you to get back the suit so I can end these goons going after this girl, you know, end them potentially coming back after me and finding out that it was me. So I can just go back with my family and have a holiday. Just all of it together just really worked for me. I was uh, I was a little bit tickled by uh, and touched by by Grills when he says, uh, "You yeah, know, come on, you're a literal superhero. Th- this is all I got." Yeah. And I was like, "Oh, but man, Grills, can we bring it in, man? We give you a hug." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that'll bring us over to uh, Kate Bishop's side quest, and obviously she goes to uh, kind of expose her her soon to be uh, stepdad, is it, uh, who's engaged to her mother, who. Rhea Formiga, another uh, well-known actress. So I think uh, good job on the on the uh, casting. As far as the casting goes, bad bad die job though. Both her and the father in that first scene, like the their hair is so distracting. <laughs> I'll give you that. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. they have the conversation at dinner. It turns out that she's into sword play. He's into sword play, and she's trying to expose him. Um, I don't know. It, it turns out there's definitely going to be some more sword play between these two. I imagine he's going to have the Ronin blade, which he is he is coming to uh, uh, to acquire okay. along the way, and she's going to have another blade and going to have to win it back for her master. Yeah, that's what it seems like. Um, I, I mean, you know, the, it, t- to me, you know, bet- between his affinity for for swords and then literally the mustache, it seems like he's the swordsman from the. Um, well, I mean, from Marvel Comics, period, but especially from the Matt Fraction, David, David Aha run. So, you know, that th- that tension being there and, you know, them doing the whole, you know, fencing thing beforehand. I really like the scene where she really was obsessed, like like she let her emotions through and kind of really went at him as he was kind of turning around and he just turned around and dispatched the sword and it was spinning and all that stuff, like really letting you know, like accidentally letting her know like how serious it was because he was letting her get hits in um, before then. So that whole scene, I, I did really like the the tension. There were parts of it where I was like, OK, it, it kind of went to this battle thing a little quickly. But then once they got into it, their exchanges and then kind of how it ended up or how it ended, I was like, OK, that's some good tension. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's let's see this play out. And I buy into it. Like, I buy into Haley's performance. She's so good mm-hmm. that, you know, I, I just, obviously, I'm a big fan of hers and a big fan of, like, all the different movies that she's been in. You know, I liked her as Spider-Gwen and Into the Spider-Verse. I, I loved her in Bumblebee. You know, obviously, True Grit is just an amazing film. Uh, you know, she's really fantastic. But 
I lost myself in her performance to where like I'm now viewing her as Kate Bishop. I'm not thinking that's Hailey Steinfeld on the screen, you know, which I think is uh, is the mark of uh, a really good performance and a really good uh, performer. Yeah, I, well, I have a friend who loves Kate Bishop. She just loves Kate Bishop so much. And for someone who doesn't enjoy Kate Bishop as much as her, me being there, watching Haley Steinsfeld, you know, like you said earlier, Aaron, you know, like just have so much presence on the screen, command it. Even her facial expressions during like minor interactions with Clint, she, it was just expressed and emoted what the character is truly feeling at the time. I just believe her so much. I, you know, I'm, I'm into it and it's making me like Kate Bishop more, even like how they stylized and did her hair and the ringlets and everything. I'm like, damn, is this even Haley Steinsfeld? This is really Kate Bishop right here. Like, okay, let's go. So yeah, I mean, all around they, you know, they, they really keyed in on some of the, some of the finer nuances that take it from, okay, here goes the Marvel formula all over again to, okay, no, people are breathing life into this thing and it's more compelling that way. It just goes to show you there's not, you know, I I do kind of agree with the thought that, you know, there aren't bad characters. There's only bad writers and bad interpretations of characters. I think that if you've got a solid writer, you know, and especially when you're doing, uh, you know, you're writing for an actor or an actress, I think that, you know, the, their performance can really bring something out of it. But, you know, one of the things that I think gives me hope for the future of the Marvel Universe, and, you know, after Endgame, I, I got to admit, I don't, I don't have a lot because I feel like that was, the, that was the capper to a lot of my interest. And I don't, I don't care about a lot of the new things that they're bringing out. Uh, still have not seen Shang-Chi, don't care. Um, Eternals, don't care. Uh, you know, the the first movie I'll probably go back and see that's that's MCU proper is Doctor Strange. Obviously, I'll see Spider Man, but that's a that's a Sony film. So it was it's nice to see that they can breathe life into these characters that in the comics have been given short shrift and you know haven't been very interesting. Have just kind of been self inserts or you know just really base level characters. It gives me hope for Miss Marvel. It gives me hope for you know a lot of the things uh, that we're going to be getting in the future. And that brings us up to the finale. We've got Clint Barton. He's got his suit back, and now he needs to get on to the Russian guys, and he decides to take out a, a play out of a Black Widow's old book where he's going to use himself as bait. He kind of goes out there and gets himself caught. It turns out along the way we do learn that Haley Steinfeld, the reason her family has money is they have this like this big security company. So she kind of hacks into their security thing. She starts cl- tracking Clinton, Clint Barton using his phone, after she acquires his number. And then we get that funny scene, Aaron, you know, that we got in the trailer when he's being held in question and he shows him, look, you can't keep me. You know, I immediately removes his bonds or whatever. And he just wants to talk to the boss. And at the same time, they want to know where Kate Bishop is. She falls through the ceiling and it's kind of brings us to the end. Who's that final character that we see? I think she, she must be deaf, correct? That's Echo. That's Maya Lopez. Okay. Which was interesting because I was like, oh, it's, it's Echo. And uh, my friend Marie, who, you know, doesn't read the comics was like, who, like, you know, like, is that supposed to be somebody? So it was like one of those things where it's like, oh, wow, they, they inserted, this has to be inserted specifically for comic fans because we're the only ones who are going to get that this character has any importance. It was a weird way to end when you think of like the normal audience. But, uh, but for, for us, it was, uh, it was a nice little, you know, Hey guys, look, it's, it's a character, you know, I wasn't thinking echo because I think of echo as like a, a hero. And I'm thinking that's going to be the big bad of the, of the thing besides the, the stepdad. Well, what would be nice is if they tied it to Daredevil because, you know, she's Kingpin's adopted daughter in the mm-hmm. in the book. And, and we know he's going to be in Spider-Man No Way Home. So it would be really nice if they kind of tied those continuities together and, and make Daredevil count. It's so funny that you mentioned Daredevil because I was going to say Echo's been a little bit like Elektra in a sense of sometimes she's on this side, sometimes she's on the the the, the other side. Maybe she's been on the on the good side a little bit more than Elektra, Elektra has been in total over the years. But um, but yeah, she's one of those, you know, kind of anti-hero t- type characters. So, you know, they'll probably start her off on this side and maybe she'll transition later. Or maybe sh- if she's not the big I imagine bad, by the end of this, this show that she's going to make a turn. Because the big bad guy, I, I think you're right as far as the stepdad being swordsman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I, th- I think... I think yeah, like I was gonna say what you said. Yeah, probably by the end of the season, she ends up, you know, turning, 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 uh, turning a new leaf, and then, yeah, the probably the the ultimate big bad is gonna be the swordsman, 
So, yeah, that's what I'm expecting. So I will give this uh, scene credit where I, I do think she was played up as a little bit too powerful in the beginning. I like that, you know, she's the understudy and she makes a big mistake. You know, she ends up throwing herself through a, through a glass ceiling and now they have leverage over Clint. They can use her now and it's kind of ruined his play. And, and uh, you know, because she thought she was trying to help, she ends up making things worse. So I think that it shows that that's uh, we have a hero in training that has some some work to it. Something you would never, never get in the comics right now. Yeah, they would never give Kate Bishop a flaw. They would never show her messing up. You know, she always has to be. They would show Clint messing up because she has to be more competent than him because she has to be elevated above the hero that we know. And I like the fact that they're not doing that here. They're, you know, she's a rookie and she's making rookie mistakes and it makes her more endearing. And that's something that the comics have forgotten how to do is make you care about these characters and, and make you, you know, root for them. You know, if your character is perfectly realized all the time and on top of it is just absolutely insufferable in their attitude, that's that's not a character that people are going to connect with. I mean, she's got a good look. I think that's why a lot of people, you know, a lot of people like her. And, and you know, like like you said, Wes, there have been a couple of stories with her that uh, that have been, you know, enjoyable. But uh, but overall, you know, I, I don't think they nail it in the comics and I think they're they're getting it right here so far. Absolutely. That's the one thing I'll give these two issues above everything else is they've smoothed out the edges and they've. They've kind of figured out where they went wrong in the comic books, and they've, they've kind of righted it here. We're getting a better version of the character. You have a great actress playing the character, which definitely helps. Uh, Jeremy Renner is a great actor for Hawkeye. Uh, there are a couple things I, you know, I, I think they could have done better, but for the most part, this, is, this, is, this was enjoyable stuff. I think the, the action and the hijinks and the, uh, the adventure is going to pick up as we move along. This was really the, the foundation laying in these first two episodes, but... Uh, definitely recommend these, and I, I had a good time. I can't wait for next week, Skip. Uh, yeah, same. Um, n- not perfect ep- episodes, um, I, like not even close to perfect, but um, d- where they excelled, they did very well, and where they fell short, they didn't fall so short. So overall, very favorable. If we're doing the whole five-star rating, I would, um, I would give episode one, four and a half. I would give episode two, Four, but I'll average it out at a four point two five. What are your final thoughts, Aaron? Well, uh, one thing I wanted to bring up, you know, they have that whole conversation where Kate Bishop is telling Hawkeye that his problem is branding, and it made mm-hmm. me wonder: Are we going to get the moment? Are we going to get the, the legit Hawkeye costume from the comics, the way that they kind of brought Scarlet Witch With the mask? Yeah, yeah. like are we going to get some variation of that? Because that would be amazing, and uh, you know, I think that would be a nice little. Uh, Nice little gift to the fans, you know, a little Christmas gift. Here you go. But it just that that conversation has to lead somewhere, you know, because everything, you know, when you're constructing these things, everything should have meaning and everything should build. Now, granted, modern Hollywood, that's not always what we get. We do get a lot of throwaway scenes that are nonsense. But I feel so far that this this show is is like putting on putting in layers. You know, they're, they're building it up. So I'm hoping that they're establishing a foundation to give us some really fun stuff that we want. So I'm uh, I'm really optimistic about this one. So yeah, I'm imagining you're also giving this a, a, a very strong recommend. Yeah, I'd say uh, you know if you like if you like Hawkeye, you like the MCU, you like uh, you like action adventures, and uh, you like uh, you know diehard type movies set at Christmas. I I still think that's what we're gonna get. We're not quite there yet, but you know obviously you don't want to blow the whole budget right out of the gate. <laughs> You've got to you know set the foundation. So yeah, let's let's see where it goes. I so far I'm more into this show than I have been any of the previous. Uh, like when we get the first two episodes, I, I'm more positive on this than I have been on any of the others. I do want to say thank you very much to Aaron Sparrow, writer from season four of uh, Young Justice. Skip, from the man behind uh, Sacktown Beatdown, right? Is it? Yep, Sacktown Breakdown. That's right. Yep. Sacktown Breakdown. I'm sorry. I knew it was one or the other. I, I, when they oh, get to the playoffs, wrong. that's when it'll be the Sacktown Beatdown, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah but, but, but that's been 15 years. So right yeah, now it should be the Sacktown, Sacktown Beatdown. But yeah, Sacktown Breakdown. And check out my comics channel, too. I'm back active over there. So doing some unboxings and reviews and all that good stuff. And uh, we will definitely be finishing up this series. The three of us will try to get all the other MCU series, the three of us. So I think there's a good uh, good chemistry here. Obviously, it goes a little long when you're doing two episodes. And definitely, Aaron and I are definitely going to be doing the Book of Boba Fett when that comes out, too. I'm not sure if Skip's down for the Star Wars. Book of Boba Fett? Um, you know what? I, I, I am. I saw the trailer. I'm getting more psyched on, on, on that. So, yeah, sign me up for that one, too. Let's do it. 
Right on. Right, well, we'll try to keep the key- team together. And, and uh, if there are any other shows out there, you know, that are kind of short bursts, uh, let us know. And we'll see if we can cover some more more uh, stuff for you guys if you're interested in it. 